My name's Mark Sherwin. I like juggly kittens, and I fucking love the Spoets. Met Scott while living in the flat, uh, summer of 85. One night we were heading out, uh, since it was after beer hours and all the alcohol was gone, heading out to our normal place to get probably banned for life again in the Athens. And as we were heading out, uh, someone was walking up. Clay stops and said, oh, Mark, meet Scott. Scott, meet Mark. So I went to shake his hand. Scott held his, held his hand out and says, pick two. I'm like, what? He said, pick two. So I picked two of his fingers, and he jabs me in the eyes. This is two in the morning. I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, you're supposed to block. You like the Three Stooges. I'm like, it's two in the fucking morning. Who's thinking Three Stooges? We were all part of the uh, communal punk rock bacchanal of Charlotte. Yeah, the famous club in Charlotte was called the Milestone around the eight, during the uh, early mid-80s. It was a former speakeasy from the 20s that this gentleman somehow came in possession of Bill Flowers. True definition of a dive bar. I mean, if you looked at the worst dive bar in Manhattan, it would probably be the Ritz compared to the Milestone. Some of the great bands that played the Milestone were Black Flag, um, Agnostic Front, UK Subs, The Exploited, um, Lolita 18, the Spoets, of course, um, COC, anti scene was their home, uh, Bloodmobile, Subculture, Ugly Americans, were, I believe, a couple times where people would just be fucking out in the living room. I know there was a couple occasions where people got drunk enough and fucked outside in the lawn between the flat and our neighbors. One, of course, time was Scott. I don't know if he was really sober enough to really uh, know what he was doing at the time, that he was outside. Actually, I was a proto-member initially. Scott and I were going to start a band when I was living in Savannah called Biff Bogus and the Pseudo Intellectuals. And I was going to be Lumpy Cat Strangler. And the idea was, I wanted to do, is we were all going to kind of wear masks. And we had this idea where the lead singer was going to be a cassette deck. But the Spoets got formed after I moved back to Charlotte. So I came down to Savannah and played with him a couple of times, basically beat a mannequin leg into a, a, a barrel of empty beer bottles with a mic at the bottom of it. We played in Columbus. The show was in a beauty parlor. Well, actually it was underneath a beauty parlor in an art studio. And the Spoats thing always was if you bring a TV, you get to throw it, and you kind of become part of the show. You kind of become part of the band. Well, we get there, and there's no TVs, but there's a stack of old computers and monitors. So everyone starts smashing these monitors and smashing the computers. And this is a tiny, tiny space. And people just start, once everything's destroyed, people start picking up the shit and smashing the bits even smaller. And they start picking up the chunks of computer boards and chips and wires and hanging them from the rafters, kind of impromptu art, art projects. The time we played Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and I think it was the Elvis Room. And it was really, it was, it was a nice kind of place. It was kind of a, uh, it was a coffee bar slash music club. And the music club was long, and along one wall they had these black velvet looking curtains. And for some reason I took offense to them. I thought they were pretentious. So my part of the performance that night is I took an industrial grinder to a stove. And I sat there for about ten minutes shooting a, a river of sparks at those, at those drapes, trying to get them to catch fire. And just the fireworks uh, finale went off a little too much. The basic club was just covered in smoke. It was just a wave. The, the smoke went from the stage when the stuff was lit, hit the ceiling, came back down, and then whooshed out off the stage into the crowd and just basically chased everyone out of the building. I've known Scott Corcoran for over 25 years. In all honesty, if he thinks it's fun, or if he thinks it'll be funny, really there's probably nothing he won't try. 